Hi everybody, thank you for joining me today. I'm Melina Rose Brown and you are watching Desperate Heart, Beautiful Feet. Just wanted to give you a heads up before we get into the message. You'll hear a little bit of howling going on behind me today because it is crazy windy in Vegas today. Just ignore it. Thank you. The first scripture that our pastor had us memorize many years ago was Psalms 1, 1 through 3 from Psalms 1, 1 through 6, the two ways, which reads, How happy is the man who does not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path of sinners, or join a group of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction, and he meditates on it day and night. He is like a tree planted beside streams of water that bears fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. This is a simple and easy to understand message. Steer clear of wrongdoing, steer clear of the wrong crowd, meditate daily in scripture and God will directly care for you and provide for you. Your life will be fruitful, abundant and prosperous. And I expect that we all like that message based on the fact that there's such a huge following for Pastors like T.D. Jakes and Joel Osteen, who peddle a multi-million dollar a year message of the prosperity gospel. Now, I saw as I continued to read scripture over the years, meditating in his word, as this scripture says, um, that there is a metaphor that's common used for trees when speaking about humanity. So I pretty quickly found another scripture that echoed the sentiment of Psalms 1, 1 through 3, which is... Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 7 and 8. The man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence indeed is the Lord, is blessed. He will be like a tree planted by the water. It sends its roots toward the stream. It doesn't fear when heat comes, and its foliage remains green. It will not worry in a year of drought or cease producing fruit. Ezekiel 47 12 says, all kinds of trees providing food will grow along both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fail. Each month they will bear fresh fruit because their water comes from the sanctuary. I understand that there is a reason for each of the four seasons that the Lord has made, but it does very little to change my opinion of winter. I absolutely hate it. We recently moved to Las Vegas from Kansas City, Missouri, where the winters are long, harsh, and disrespectful quite honestly there's obviously no pool days except for about four months out of the year during the winter time which seems to have went from three months to six months at some point the streets are icy and hard to navigate and it's just relentless cold most of all the thing that i hate though is that there are miles and miles of bare lifeless branches no leaves no flowers no fruit just empty bare somber branches that are a sad skeleton of their former state and it seems while those trees lie dormant that a little bit of my spirit would also lie dormant with them so in beautiful cities across the world that are oceanside they probably take for granted that they have year-round green trees and i often found myself wishing that kansas city's trees stayed that way that they were always green and abundant and that the leaves did not have to wither and fall but God does tell us in his word that if we would continue to stay in the word and follow his commands, that we can be like those oceanside trees that do stay green and fruitful. So every year as I would muddle through winter, I'd start to see eventually these small signs that spring was on the way. So I'd see that my bill is going down now and that the days are getting longer and that I'd start seeing hopeful little buds sprouting on the trees and that would reinvigorate my soul. So, uh, even here in Vegas, there's less bare branches, but nonetheless, as soon as I start seeing these trees blossom, it just really encourages me and excites me. So, um, Matthew 3, 8 and 10 say, therefore, produce fruit consistent with repentance. Even now the ax is ready to strike the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that doesn't produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Matthew 12, 33. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. 
Matthew chapter 21 tells of Jesus walking early one morning, returning to the city. He's hungry and spotting a lone fig tree near the road, he approaches it and finds nothing on it except for a few bare branches. Upset, a little hangry perhaps, Jesus curses the tree saying to it, may no fruit ever come from you again. And immediately the tree withers. The fig tree is a representation once again for us. If Jesus were to approach you today looking for good fruit and you have none, you'd be of no use to him. And that's certainly not his desire. In John 15, 8, Jesus said, My Father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. The stream is God's word and it's always flowing. It is our responsibility to be a good tree, to not be so distracted by the things of the world and everything else going on in our busy lives that we fail to send our roots out to the stream that is God's word. I hope that this message blesses somebody today and that it reached whoever God intends for it to reach. Have a blessed day and thanks for watching.